Hello everyone, my name is Brian with Blackburn and Tech. So I kind of wanted to go over the uh, OpenWRT router. It's it's a pretty decent router. It's I wouldn't say it's the most feature-rich router, but it, it kind of gives you a good high-level overview of having a like your own personalized router environments. Uh, a lot of people nowadays seem to stick with uh, what their ISP gives them, which it, in some environments it's fine, but maybe you want to have a little more control and uh, have a little more tinker time. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so we should be able to see. Um, so this is the OpenWRT environment. The only thing I really did is I changed the color because initially it's in bright white mode and I don't really handle the whole blind your eyeball side if I don't have to. Um, so from the status page, it's like most status pages, just kind of gives you a little high level overview, how much RAM it's using and all this. So. And then what your port status is. So, for example, I I have this hooked up on my uh, house network, so it's seeing that this is a, has a 10 gig link in it, uh, and the other one's down. But it gives you a little bit of information about, okay, well I'm getting a an IP address from a DHCP client, and and if you're not familiar with DHCP, essentially DHCP is uh, a protocol that gives out IP addresses, so that way you don't have to go in and manually do it. It makes it so much more convenient when it's working right. But so from here, it's just a good basic overview. You can put this on like, say if you had a Raspberry Pi, you had a small computer sitting around your house, you had a couple network adapters in it. You can put this on there and make this your house router if you wanted to. So from the, stat the status area, you can see it kind of gives you just a high level overview of what's going on, such as graphs, firewall rules, and some routing. We can go into some of these sub sections if you want. Uh, so like routing, it'll just see some of, it'll tell you with the basic routes that it knows about. Um, the big meat and potatoes is under the networking side of it. So if you click on under this, it'll show you the interfaces. Um, where this says BR, that means it's a bridged environment. So multiple adapters can be connected together if you wanted to. You don't have to. So I've seen sometimes that's a performance issue, but for the most part, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, this is on the LAN side of, so this is what your house network would be. Would be. Your, your house network would be the LAN, um, and the internet provider would be the WAN environment in most. So if you say, if um, this is just on a generic IP address, but maybe we want to change it, we can come in and click edit. And this will even give you multiple sections, such as do I want a DHCP server? Um, like I said, where that gives out the IP addresses for you, so you don't have to do it yourself. Um, currently it's on 192.168.1.1. So anything that has this 192.168.1 in it is part of that network. Um, as you can see, bring up on boots, a good idea since we wanted to automatically come up. Maybe we had like a little lab testing network and we didn't want it to come up. We could change that here and just kind of, uh, we'll turn it on when we, we want it on. Um, some of the advanced settings, you, know, you don't really have to use some of this, but like if you have your own DNS server, like DNS is like a phone book. So if you're trying to go to google.com, instead of you having to know what Google's public IP address is, you can just put in google.com. That's what your DNS server is. Um, and there's some more advanced stuff in there you probably won't mess with, need to mess with. Uh, firewall rules, tells you which group it's part of. And then that DHCP server where we can kind of come in and tell it how many IP addresses we wanted to use. So for example, this one will start at 100 and go to 50. So that tells me that I can only have 50 clients on the network that will have an IP address that will be passed out through DHCP. Um, so even if you come over and look on the firewall side of this, this is kind of a, a uh, simplified version of this. So maybe we wanted to open up a, a uh, web server or something to the outside. We could do that. That's where these NAT rules come in. That's what, if I'm coming in from this, then I want it to translate it to my internal server is what those NAT rules are. Um, and as you can see, there's only a few zones that's currently set up on here. But if we just take a look at the firewall, the traffic rules, this is, okay, what are we allowing? Allowing pings, so if we read it, uh, allowing pings from WAN to this device. So I can ping the device, uh, for example. Um, and then it also has some of the other stuff on it. Since this is inside my house, I do have a allow all rule to this device from the WAN. You typically wouldn't do that. Now, that would be a very insecure thing to do, but since it's inside the house, if you did have to open it up, say you wanted to be able to access your router from like your work, you could lock it down by its source IP address or whatever your public IP address is, 
at your work, for example, and you could just lock it down right there. Would, for example, if I come in here and click edit on this rule, so where it says source address, if I wanted to say lock this down to my work, I would put my work's public IP address right there and then save it. And then the big thing that threw me for a loop initially is they had to save and apply. Um, some environments have that. Uh, so you make a change and you sit there and test it out and it's not working, make sure you actually click that button. It's a really common thing. When you first get one of these set up, um, if you go buy one or if you install it like I did, it, it has a default credential, so it's just root and there's no password with it. And it's highly insecure to just leave it like that. You'd always want to come in and change your, uh, change your uh, password, which would be under administration. And right here is your password access. This is also where you can specify whether you want SSH turned on or do you want it to redirect HTTPS, for example, is a really good option because you don't want to use HTTP if you don't have to. Um, software is where you would come for like software updates you know, and additional packages. Uh, it would show up right here and you can install the update from here. And then there's other diagnostic tools in here. Um, I'm not gonna go into all of them, but maybe I wanted to test to see if I can ping something. Is my DNS working? Do I wanna see what the route is to something? For example, if I wanna ping their, their, their site, I can just click this and it should go ahead and give me the information whether the router can reach out and actually talk to them. And as you can see, this is their public IP address. Um, since it has that name in there, we can see that DNS is working because we are getting a public IP address back. All right. Well, this has been a quick overview. I was going to do um, a uh, micro tick router, but I found out that there's a lot of settings in there. And I didn't know on, if that would be beneficial for anyone. Uh, if you think that having a little more content, a little more in depth on setting some of these up, I'd be happy to go over it. Just drop, a, drop it in the comments and let me know. And I'd be definitely more than happy to go over adding more stuff and uh, even even other uh, platforms. Maybe you want to figure out how to set up a VPN or something. Hey, I'm more than happy to help out. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe. It makes YouTube happy and it also helps out the channels for your time and have a good day.